Hello everyone, Tom with Cape of Fetish. Today we're going to continue with our Unsung series. Today we're going to cover the year 1973 and what a great year this was for albums, especially albums that no one really talks about so much. So I'm going to start off here with the debut album from Tom Waits, Closing Time. Fine, fine debut album. Starts off with the song Old 55, a song later covered by the Eagles. I like his version way better though has just an incredible collection of singer-songwriter songs. I Hope That I Don't Fall In Love With You is beautiful. Martha, uh, other great songs on here. Uh, Rosie, Lonely, Ice Cream Man, uh, closes with uh, Closing Time on side two. This is before Waits had that kind of Helen Wolf on steroids voice, which would, he would later uh, you know, employ on albums like Swordfish Trombones and Rain Dogs. This is a totally different Tom Waits. His first three albums are more singer-songwriter-oriented, singer and I think this is probably one of my favorite periods of his. Really, really good stuff. And uh, after this, he would go on to uh, The Heart of Saturday Night and another great uh, live album called Nighthawks at the Diner. But this is where it all began. Uh, Tom Waits, uh, his debut from Asylum Records, Closing Time. Now, the great album is uh, the album Tanks by T-Rex. Usually when people think of T-Rex, it's always uh, Electric Warrior or uh, The Slider, which are just flawless albums. But I think this album stands up, too, on its own. It's a great album, full of chock full of great tunes. Tenement Lady starts it off. you got Mr. Mr., Broken Hearted Blues with that saxophone. Shows a little lighter side of bowling, a little more sensitive side. Uh, you got Shock Rock. I think that just kicks ass. That's great stuff. You've got uh, Country Honey. Electric Slim and the Factory Hen in side one. Good stuff. You got Mad Donna on side two. Born to Boogie. Uh, Life is Strange. Ends with Left Hand Luke. This is a great, great album. Solid four-star album. Maybe not as consistent as the two prior albums. But um, along with this album, he released the song, uh, T-Rex released um, uh, 20th Century Boy, which just, is just one of their greatest rockers. Not released on this album, but... Recorded around this time. A lot of people have covered it, you know, like uh, The Replacements and many others. But yeah, T-Rex Tanks is a great album. Good, good album. Another great album is the third album from Terry Reed, and that is River. This is a different type of album for Terry Reed. The first two are more rock-oriented. This is more kind of singer-songwriter, ballad-type stuff. Side one is a little more upbeat, but side two is the gem on this album. It's all just these really slow-moving... Free, slow-moving, really emotional, uh, really heartfelt, soulful songs. Uh, side two, it's The River, title track. You've got Dream, and then you've got Milestones. So good. I think side two of this album is probably one of his best sides. Incredible singer. Uh, it's too bad that he never really made a bigger impact. But he's known. He's known in, in a lot of circles, but... This is an album that you should pick up if you if you could find it. I don't even know if it's still available. I haven't seen it in years. I, I picked this up years ago in the used bin. And it's a promotional DJ copy. But yeah, great album, The River from Terry Reed. A lot of critics tend to think that the Kinks were finished after 71, which is just bullshit. I think they were just getting on a second wave of just great albums. I love their concept album period. Uh, a lot of the critics pan these albums, and I just think they're full of shit. I think these albums are masterpieces, all these RCA albums. Um, the Kinks Preservation Act 1, first act, act 2 would come later in 74. This album is just flawless. It's just flawless. It has just incredible lyrics, arrangements. You know, they have the brass section behind them at this point, the Mike Cotton sound. It starts off with the morning song, which is really unusual. It goes into daylight. Sweet Lady Genevieve, probably the only song this album ever gets credit for from a lot of people. There's way more better songs on here. <clears throat> one of the Survivors, Inside One, great rocker. Uh, I remember seeing the Kinks in 77 at the Santa Monica Civic. First time I ever saw them, they opened with that tune. I was just blown away. Um, side two, you've got Cricket, great song. Money and, Corru Money and Corruption, I Am Your Man is very, very timely. What's going on now in the world uh, here comes Flash, Sitting in the Midday Sun, great ballad, and it ends with Demolition. This is a fantastic record. If you haven't heard it, check it out. Preservation Act 1 by The Kinks. This is an album I heard in the record store the other day, and I forgot how great it was. So I came home and played it. 
And I just love this album. John Cale's Paris 1919. This is John Cale more as a singer-songwriter, less experimental. Side one of this is absolute perfection. The songs, uh, Child's Christmas in Wales, Hanky Panky Know How, The Endless Plane of Fortune, Andalusia, and Macbeth. Just a perfect side of music. Side two is great as well, but this first side of this album. Just great, great songs. Great stuff. John Cale, Paris, 1919. I've always really loved the first Aerosmith album. I think it shows them more as like a, you know, less as a like a hard rock band and more of a bar band, boogie band. Uh, you've got, uh, of course, uh, the hit that would became a hit three years later after this album was released, uh, uh, <laughs> Dream On. And then you've got just one of their early kick-ass tunes on here called uh, One Way Street. Just this great... Great boogie tune. It goes on for about six or seven minutes of great guitar playing from Joe Perry. Great rockers on here. Make It, Mama Kin. Ends with Walking the Dog. I, I think this is just a really great rock and roll record. And, um, you know, most people talk about Toys in the Attic or Rocks, which are great albums, but I think this first album is stellar. Aerosmith's debut. Next, we have uh, Neil Young. His first album um, for the... Um, the Ditch Trilogy, as they call it, uh, where he kind of uh, said fuck it to celebrity and status and just charted making music uh, that he wanted to make. More dark type music. This album here was recorded on a, um, a tour in 73, kind of a tumultuous tour. Danny Witten was kind of on his way out. Bruce Berry, the roadie, died. Um, and Neil, Neil Young was not in the greatest shape mentally. And... Um, but I don't know. This album has grown over me over the years. Um, I kind of avoided it for many years, but um, a lot of these songs are really good. Um, Time Fades Away opens it up. The title track, um, Journey Through the Past, he was already doing on tour in 1971. Uh, also, Love in Mind as well. It was another song that he did a few years prior. Uh, the song L.A. is really interesting, really different. This, the song structures on these show a whole new Neil Young. He's not really going for that typical verse chorus verse thing and making things super melodic it's you you need a few listens to really get the get the get the gist of what's going on in these songs uh the bridge isn't is really cool don't be denied is a really cool tune and then it ends with last dance which i really like this really long tune just keeps circling around and around the chorus and the playing really really cool stuff so this along with tonight's the night and time fades away wait tonight's this is time fades away this, along with Tonight's the Night and On the Beach, are his Ditch Trilogy. And all three of these albums, not really well-received when they came out, but now are considered classics. And I love them all. They're great. And I like this one as well. Time Fades Away, Neil Young. Another great album is from the lead singer from the Youngbloods. Uh, this album called Song for Julie by Jesse Colin Young. Great album here. Great album that no one really talks about. Um, kind of a folk jazz rock album. Great arrangement, great playing, all those great L.A. studio session players. That whole kind of vibe. Uh, starts off with Morning Sun, great song. The title track is great. There's a really cool tune, uh, Ridge, Ridge Top. Some really amazing playing, some saxophone. Ends with Evening uh, on side one, another great track. Kind of reminds me of Youngblood's Elephant Mountain kind of period. Side two is maybe not as strong, but there's some great songs on there like Country Home. T-Bone Shuffle. Check this out if you've never heard it. You could probably find it in any 99 cent bin, used bin. Really great album. Jesse Colin Young, Song for Julie. Another great singer-songwriter album out of Britain. Uh, incredible songwriter. John Martin, Solid Air. Such a great album. Uh, the title track written for his friend Nick Drake. Songs, great songs just abound over and over here. Go Down Easy, Dreams by the Sea, May You Never is one of his greatest, greatest songs. Um, over the Hill, The Easy Blues, just a great British folk singer-songwriter album from 73. Speaking of singer-songwriter, how about Jackson Brown's second album, For Every Man? This is one of my favorite Jackson Brown albums, probably my top two right here. Has his version of Take It Easy, which he wrote with Glenn Fry. I like actually like Jackson Brown's version way better. Flows into this great song called Our Lady of the Well. Great song. 
Uh, you have his version of These Days, which he wrote when he was 16. I think he one is one of the first songs he ever wrote. A lot of people have covered it. Greg Allman covered it on Laid, Laid Back, the Laid Back album. Also, Nico covered it, too, on her debut, Chelsea Girl. A lot of great rockers, too. Redneck Friend with some great playing from David Lindley on there. Uh, you've got uh, the title track for Every Man, and I love the song Ready or Not. I heard this album so much growing up as a child. It was constantly on the turntable from my brother and sisters. Love this album. For Every Man, Jackson Brown. And then, um, in my opinion, the last great album from this band before they became kind of a nostalgic oldies act. This is a fantastic record, and it's Holland by the Beach Boys. Not a lot of people talk about this album. I think which I think bringing in Ricky Fatar and John and um, Blondie Chaplin was such a great move on Carl Wilson's part for this album. They add so much to the sound and vibe of this record. It just starts off with Sail on Sailor with a pristine vocal from Blondie Chaplin. One of their great 70s songs, early 70s songs. Then it has um, the song called Steamboat, I think, which was written by Dennis Wilson, but sung by Carl. Now, Carl, Carl Wilson now is basically this album, Surf's Up, and Sunflower. He's pretty much the leader of the band at this point, as Brian Wilson's mental capacities are kind of diminished. But Carl Wilson really picks up, picks everything up here on this album. He has a great song called The Traitor. And during this period, along with the Surf's Up album, he was writing just a lot of great songs like uh, Fuel Flows, Long Promise Road. Great songwriter and a great singer, Carl Wilson. So uh, you got The Traitor on side two. You have one of my favorite songs on here called Leaving This Town, written by and written and sung by Blondie Chaplin. Such a great tune. They were really going into a great phase here with the Surf's Up album and this album, and then they just became an oldies act after Endless Summer. And I think that was due partly to, or mostly to Mike Love. So, um, and then it ends with Funky Pretty. Great, great tune. I guess another tune sung by um, Blondie Chaplin. I, I think this is just almost a five-star record. And I think this album, along with Surf's Up and Pet Sounds, are my three favorite Beach Boy albums. I think they're all pretty solid. And this one really, to me, is a solid, solid album. Beach Boys Holland. Another great one is the debut from Graham Parsons, GP. I don't have the album. This is a double disc with uh, Grievous Angel. Here's the album, GP. That song, A Song for You, I think is one of his greatest songs he ever wrote. Fantastic stuff. There's a lot of other great stuff on GP as well. Uh, Still Feeling Blue, uh, Streets of Baltimore, That's All It Took, On and On. Cry One More Time, How Much I've Lied. GP from um, Graham Parsons. Great, great, great record. And the final record I'm going to feature today is uh, I've, uh, an artist I've just been loving for the past couple of years. Um, I've been touting her albums now for a while now. This is her second record, her final record. Heart Food by Judy Sill. Now, she has a documentary. There's a documentary coming out uh, on the 15th, or no, the 12th of April on uh, Apple TV. You must check out. It's called Lost Angel. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And uh, hopefully it raises her, uh, her profile a little bit in the music circles. So people discover her. This album is a great follow-up to her just amazing debut. Uh, a lot of people have heard of The Kiss, and uh, Andy Partridge from XCC really rates that song high on his list of favorite songs. Uh, you can go on YouTube and watch uh, her do that song on the Old Grey Wessel Test. Really amazing. Every song on here is just dynamite. Great arrangements. There's A Rugged Road, uh, The Pearl, which was written uh, for the first album, but was redone for this album. Uh, you've got Soldier of the Heart. The Phoenix is fantastic. When the Bridegroom Comes. Oh, such a great vocal. Such, so passionate. And then the highlight for me on this album is the final cut on side two, The Donor. Just this acapella with layers and layers of vocals and harmonies going on. It's like you're in church. It's just bizarre. It's just, it, it, it just keeps building and building and building. And there's these, these subtle changes that happen. It's hard to really put it into words. I wish I could play it for you. Must check this album out. Check that song out, The Donor. This is an amazing album. Um, it's all arranged by Judy Sill, produced all the harmonies. Amazing stuff going on in this album. Excellent stuff. So there, uh, there is about 12 or 13 or 14 unsung albums from 73. What are your unsung albums from 73? Albums that really kind of 
are lower on the lower tier of albums of 73 that no one talks about? Let me know in the comments section. Please press subscribe. And as always, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you soon, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.